You're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, how to get along with people once you know what they really think. Also, dog pee and aeronautics and the demon in your clothes dryer. So, I have a dog update because oh. I know that our three or four listeners like to hear about the animals. Yes, they do. And I believe I told you that there's just constant war going on between Belly, the little bulldog, and Minion, our great big giant senior. And it's before it was her. She's just trying to be the boss. Well, now he wants to, whenever he sees her, he starts he starts trouble. We were going to rehome her because we've got the house split in half. Minion is in the half with the dog door. Belly is in the half with the kitchen and the living room because she wants to be with us more than Minion does. Well, I called a rescue. They put up on Facebook this big, long thing about her and how she has to be rehomed and she should be the only dog. In the two days that that was on Facebook, uh-huh. she all of a sudden learned to go in your house. She learned to stop. And she answers to her name. And I don't know if this dog is on Facebook or what. Yeah, I was going to ask, is the dog on Facebook? Because all of a sudden she got obedient as heck. It is so weird. She doesn't listen to Frankie at all. We're working on that. But she listens to me and she listens to Eve. And as soon as she stands up on that gate and I say, belly house, and she goes in her crate. So here's the thing then. Frankie has to go on Facebook and threaten her. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the logic I know. there. This, uh, this little dog is smarter than we thought. But yeah, yes, it's give them it's credit, actually yeah. a lot better now that she backs away. Because he's 12 and he didn't have a lot of brain to begin with. Yeah, he was your stupidest dog by your report. Uh, yes, he flunked dog school three times. So they gave him a cap and said, get the hell out of here. So, and he's happy to, just sitting outside staring at the goat. So we're keeping her. So you've taken down the rehoming effort? Yes. Good. It's done. Speaking of Facebook, why do people think that they need, and and this is universal, this is for every political stripe. I thought Facebook was supposed to be like a social thing, like here's a picture of our new puppy, these are our grandchildren. Since when did it get to be that you put up a picture of some music artist doing something, or in, in the case of my Facebook page, dropping dead, and all of a sudden, people start fighting over their politics. Like, this is a dead musician. This has yeah, I erase n- those people nothing right to away. do. Well, I, you know, because some of this is social. I'm, I, to, be, to, to their credit, when I put up a thing that said, if y'all are going to fight on my Facebook page when somebody dies, I'm going to have to start taking down your posts, which would be a shame. And people shut up at that point. But they, See, I just sent them off into wherever. I, Mega, I don't where understand. I'm purgatory. It's, this is a public thing. Why would you stand up at somebody's funeral? Well, I, I guess this isn't well, because the same. People, but... people feel like they are um, hidden when they're on. They'll write stuff on a computer that they would not say to your face. These people aren't hidden. They're, they, we know who they are. Their, fa- their Facebook profiles. Everybody knows who they are. They're proud of their views. Well, well, great. That's great. But tell them it's not on your page. It, there are things that you do in one place that are not appropriate for another place. My, my... I'm massively political, like you know, and I don't put anything political on Facebook. It's pictures of my dogs, pictures of my kids. I, dumb stuff. There would be there, I know one person who shows up on my Facebook page who would make a political statement about your dog. I mean, they just cannot. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. This person would talk about, you know, how certain people are abusing certain kinds of dogs. And I, I just. <laughs> yeah. No, people just feel like they're hidden. That's all. Because people write like the weirdest stuff, just the weirdest stuff. And I will read these little fights, you know, like in the Williams, whatever buy, sell, and mouth off page, Mm -hmm. or I guess it's fingers off. Mm -hmm. But they fight about the stupidest things. It's just, like, ridiculous. And I keep that because I buy stuff off that page. But at the turn of a dime, it turns political. So so would you buy something off somebody who had written something really nasty on that? This this is commerce over, over 
uh, yes. politics. You would. So if yes. it's the the most vicious, nasty, as long as I want it, ugly, you you don't care. You would do business with yeah. that person. And this is, I suppose, the universal truth. Commerce rules everything. You, well, you, I'm I am very friendly to everyone because this is a small town. It's a really small town. It's a very conservative town. It's not highly educated. And if I was going to cut everybody off, I'd sit at home all the time. But isn't that so, what you do? You sit at home all the time. What the hell? Well, no, it's... I'm starting to get out now. Oh, Look, no okay. cast. No cast. You can... I'm free. Oh, wow. Wow. Yep. I'm learning how to use my wrist again. But yes, I say hello to people and I talk to people and I know what their politics are, but I would never get into any kind of a conversation with them because they're <laughs> and that's uh so that got political there <laughs> let me let me tell you about my other big news uh -huh. i think i sent you a picture of my other arm my left arm which was the one that worked <laughs> yeah and i uh, this is the dumbest thing ever okay so the bulldog this is fell. wait wait the dumbest yeah. thing ever okay let yes. me make it just a minute let me get out some paper this is worse Dumbest thing than falling ever. off the deck and breaking three ribs. Okay. This makes that look like a party. Okay. So Belly, for some reason, pees right by the front door. It's annoying, but she's going to do it. We just think she does it because she's mad. So I bought these pee pads that you just wash, and that she pees on those. Well, she missed a couple days ago and peed on my floor. So I had to clean it up. And Frankie was out working somewhere. Eve was at work. So I was the only one there. I don't know how this happened. Oh, no. But I was cleaning the floor. And somehow that pee pad, which has like little nubs, you know, on the bottom to keep it from sliding. Oh, no. It flew like a great, what are those? Fine carpet things. Like magic Aladdin. carpet. Magic, yeah, Aladdin's magic, magic carpet. carpet pee pad is I what was, you're telling me. I was... I was freaking Aladdin. I went up in the air, literally, and came down on the back of that freaking pee pad. And I sat there for like a half hour going, what the heck happened? And the dog's licking my face, and I have two cats on top of me. And I did, however, fall to the left. I don't know how I did that, but my right side, my, my newly uncasted hand per made it through the fall. Perfectly fine. But it was nasty looking. So it took a really, it took a, probably about 45 minutes to decide whether we were going to go to urgent care or not. And I, it looks like I have a tattoo of the stupid pee pad. It, it's actually a pattern of the bottom of that thing. <laughs> Imprinted on your arm? Yep. All right. So the, the question that our three listeners are going to want to know. Yes. The pee pad that you landed on. Was it full of pee or, or no, was she missed it? Well, okay, I just well, but she could have peed twice one, once missing and once on the pee pad. I thought True. you were going to tell me that you had slipped in the pee and and no, no, I slipped on, on the, the pee, pee pad. pad and it went flying and I went flying and I went boom. I got, I I got like, it now. I just think it's holy I, moly. I just think it's hilarious that this dog you tolerate a dog that pees in front of the front door every single time somebody comes home you buy a no, special she doesn't when we leave she does a special washable pee pad okay when you leave yep. and any yep. dog that did that in my house would be leaving right soon after that well um, i'm a lot less um picky yeah that's yeah. a good word picky very picky. Any dog that peed on my on my floor, unless it was my fault, like if I, I when the spousal unit was away, uh, I was I finally got so exhausted from walking the dog around that I I overslept and there there was a small greeting for me by the front door, but that was my fault. So, um, well, you got you have beautiful floors, and you, you, have, you have to remember. Floors. No, no, I, you, no, you have beautiful floors. Well, like no, tile. they're Mexican clay tiles. They're lovely. But they're really easy to clean up, and it's dirty all the time because I have dogs going in and out and in and out and in and out. I don't know. I just know that if I had to worry about a, a water skiing lake full of dog pee every time I came <laughs> back home, I would rehome that dog so fast. You, you, you She's could... a good girl. Uh, yeah, no. And good I just, girl, I good girl pee and pee on the floor every time you open the door is not good girl. That is by definition not good girl. I don't know why she does that. 
because you'll put up with mad. it because you'll put up with it that's probably what. yeah but i mean i wash them out they go with whatever laundry usually rugs Blech. but uh well, like, oh and speaking of that yeah guess what i did this weekend we, we bought a new washer and dryer oh very cool electrolux brand new i actually am joining the century because i'm sure the washer and dryer that's in here is from like 1993 and oh. we're gonna see if they use less water which i'm sure they do because the ones we have are so old and yeah. the dryer started making creepy noises what constitutes a creepy noise um it's like squeaking and growling like i don't want to put any clothes in there <laughs> our washer did a weird thing this is so bizarre that, that you have a conversation about your your dryer and i have one yeah. about my washer like it's an entity of its own for a while there our washing machine was making these little tiny cuts in all our clothing and we could not figure out was something sticking out was something stuck was there a nail and i must have watched about two hours of youtube videos of people trying to figure out why their washers were making little tiny cuts in their clothing, which was baffling on any number of levels. Number one, why were their washers making little tiny cuts in their clothing? And number two, why did they have the time and inspiration to make a YouTube video about it? <laughs> and at that point, I was so far down the rabbit hole that I just gave up. And, and then it stopped for no reason. That's really weird. It is really weird. It was like a demon in my clothes washer. It <laughs> but um, my last new dryer was like when the first fancy front load things came out. Yes. And I was so proud of my washer and dryer. And I'm not going to tell you what kind they are because I'm about to say something really mean. Okay. I got them. I bought the three-year warranty. On the first day of the fourth year, <laughs> the computer inside blew up. Oh, dear. Yeah, so... You know, this whole thing about intelligent AI, you know, we're all going to have AI appliances. No. They're going to know when it's the day after the warranty. They're going to know. Yep. Yeah. If I were making appliances now and selling them as, this is your smart, fill in the blank of appliance here. If it's all that smart, it's going to know exactly when it's done. I am so afraid of AI. I got to tell you, I have nightmares because really some moron can put your face on the internet and put words in your mouth. And that just like totally, that's beyond my realm. They're not going to put words in our mouths because what comes out of our mouths is already so mortifying. Well, that's know? true. Yeah, you're flying on a pee pad. What could they possibly do with AI that would be more embarrassing or humiliating than that? You've been listening to Tory Writer's She Said What podcast. And you probably know about my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air. Now there's an audio book, so you can have me with you on long drives or short commutes. And you can download it from Amazon. It also makes a lovely gift. <laughs>